coming! Jesus, fuck! Yeah! Ah, oh, fuck! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, hello? Oh, oh, it's, it's a text message. Pretty long text message term, though. Dear Riser, it's finally time for you to face your pride. You will do so by reviewing So You Are a Cartoonist. Don't disappoint me. Sincerely, Pride. She, she literally phoned it in. She phoned it in. For fuck's sake. I thought I was lazy. Jesus Christ, I can't work with these people. I hope you're ready to die. No, seriously, we're all gonna die. Because the universe is gonna implode in and around itself until it's nothing more than a... Well, nothing. Why is the universe going to implode, you ask? Well, because in this particular episode, we're having a webcomic review of reviewing a webcomic about a comic artist talking shit about other comics and art styles. Comic, comic, comic. Today's author and artist is a guy called Andrew Dobson, which is a name that shouldn't be all that unfamiliar to you. Mostly because he's wildly known as the most hated professional in the world when it comes to comics. Why? Because unlike mere mortals, Andrew actually studied art and drawing. Now, Fred Gallagher studied drawing, even if that's architecture, but at least his education showed off, while Andrew Dobson... Well, we'll get to that. Now, we'll go a little at him name here, because Andrew actually steps over a few toes of mine when it comes to his points of views, most particularly about art and the styles and the likes. However, as always, please note that the comics review will not be affected by this. So, first of all, let me just tackle the big pink elephant in the room that has decided to crash on my couch ever since I started researching this review and talk about Caddy N. Caddy N was an alias used by Andrew Dobson when visiting a fetish forum for people with the hearts for inflation. Innocently enough, until you realize he pretended to be a girl and everything from there is just a downward spiral into what is today's Andrew Dobson. Don't worry, this will all make sense later. Now that I've tackled something that has nothing to do with the actual webcomic, we can continue the ad hominem in the premise section of the comic. But Riser, you bald midget of stuttering gibberish, you might say, why would you continue the ad hominem in the premise section? And the answer is actually pretty simple. The comic is Andrew Dobson. Seriously, every comic is him doing something. Him. Not a character of sorts, no. Him. Not a made-up persona with uncanny similarities. Nope, it's all Andrew Dobson. Inserting yourself into a comic to make yourself shine like a hero. Just, just, just go away, please. Good. Now, some people might claim, well, that's not so bad. It could be a cartoony avatar sharing his likeness. And that's until you read the shit underneath his comics, which are always a follow-up to what happens on the page. I swear I've lost count of how many times I've read this really happened under the comic. So what does happen on the pages? Well, it's basically just weird various moments of Andrew Dobson's life in which he tells his story of being a professional cartoonist and his thoughts on various things. Now, Control and Delete and Multiplex are both what are qualified as workplace comics, which is essentially comics about people working somewhere and the life and the episodes that happens while having such a profession. Usually, like 9 times out of 10, the comics are always how stupid the customers are and the jokes are horribly predictable. So, your cartoonist is no different. But it gets worse. 
Most workplace comics are basically just the protagonist having a better knowledge of a specific media than the customer, and the customer is therefore ridiculed by the lack of knowledge. Andrew Dobson, however, takes it a step further and tries to convey shit like he is a master at what he does, even super talented as a kid. And here is where he's stepping over toes. My toes in particular. Do you see all of that over there? On that shelf? Now, I'm a huge fan of manga, be it childish shit or adult stuff or even... Yeah, I just like it. I got my first manga when I was 12 years old and I was enthralled with the unique style, how it was so different from everything else and even how it read from right to left. When Pokemon came around and my parents got divorced, my love for manga and anime rose and when my friend introduced me to drawing manga, I jumped in like I've never jumped into a project before. I'm not saying it's a superior style to what we have in the West. In fact, many times I prefer the art of the Western style, but manga just appeals to me more in general. Now, why this big talk about anime and manga? Andrew Dobson seems to make a thing to bash anime and manga at every given chance, going so far as to claim that the reason he is not better than he is now is because he wasted most of his life drawing manga. He also likes to claim that that is the sole reason why he's not working for DISNEY! Where you wanted to be, Dobson, and you only have yourself to blame! In other words, he's claiming that manga and anime is so bad that it has halted his progress as a cartoonist. Now, bastardizing an entire genre of art because of a few bad experiences is just shallow and trivial. I know guys screaming in the comments section. I know, I did the same thing with furries. But that was an inexperienced fuck nugget. I have learned from my mistakes. Dobson only seems to be more fueled as time passes. And the reason this is so bad is because what Andrew Dobson is trying to do with his come here is to teach young people the errors of being a cartoonist and give them some insight in his world. You know, to help them. While the idea is good enough and pretty interesting, you gotta remember that the guy who's trying to teach people stuff is a guy who said actually working to achieve your goal is bollocks and you instead have to be lucky. That's like Hideo Kojima coming up to me and be like, Oh, you make suck story! Get better, but no work! So yeah, so, your cartoonist is basically a guy with an ego at the size of the fucking sun, telling you that if you don't like what he likes, then you should get the fuck out, and trying and failing horribly at comedy. And speaking of opinions and liking stuff, Dobson goes to great lengths pointing out stuff he likes that no one else does. No, seriously, the segments are literally called things that I like that either no one else does or don't really care about, or cool things I can do, and he really does his hardest to drive that home. Through research, I've even found out he once had a separate gallery only to those comics, meaning he went to extra great lengths just to show how controversial he is. Dude, you're not cool just because you like M. Night Shyamalan Ding Dong or Metroid Other M. It just shows that you studied art and not writing. NOT DROP THAT BASE! <laughs> Like, it's okay to have an opinion of your own, in fact that's like the best thing in the world. I mean, everyone knows that I adore at least I could do, even if it's wildly acclaimed to be the pinnacle of shittiness. Yet you don't see me walking around waving it in people's faces and telling people they're wrong when they trash talk the comic. Dobson on the other hand almost always screams at you, simply for disagreeing with him. Really? I'm fully aware that it probably sounds like I haven't actually talked about the actual comic here, but trust me, I have. The comic is in all its simplicity Andrew Dobson being a prick to people, calling them names and talking to them in condescending ways, and later wonder why no one wants to show up at his booth at conventions. The comic is not funny, it's not clever, it doesn't have a story, and it's not teaching you anything. It's just... there. Take this strip for example. It's him living in college, his roommate is fucking someone, and his other roommate is partying, so his only option to sleep is to sleep in the bathtub. What exactly are you supposed to take away from that? It's not funny, it's not something connected to a plot, it's not something that teaches you anything, it's just... It's just there. It reminds me of Call of Duty, really. 
It doesn't try to do something. It doesn't have a story to tell or anything for you to take away from it. It's just a sad way to earn cash from people who get enjoyment out of it for some unexplainable reason. Or rather that's Call of Duty. No one enjoys so you are a cartoonist. I will say though that at one point at July 2012, Andrew did decide to make a few comics where he gave some honestly rather good tips on how to draw and gave some good tips to the aspiring artists. I feel if he focused more on this, the comic would be far better. Andrew, you can still make it. But the chances of you taking this criticism is slim to none, so I won't hold my breath. <laughs> Let's get this over with, the art is okay, so fuck it. I used to work as a video game reviewer and once I got a complaint cause I had reviewed a game poorly and wasn't allowed to do that because the team who made the game only consisted of like 5 people. Now why am I bringing this up? Because it doesn't matter what lies behind the finished product. The product should be reviewed on its own merit and just because Andrew Dobson's work isn't as impressive as his peers, it is still good. You know, good as in slightly above average. But, 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 but not a lot. Andrew Dobson shows obvious traits as a person appreciating the western style of drawing in a cartoony style, bearing many similarities to Garfield and Calvin and Hobbes. His faces are good and you are never wondering what the character is doing. And believe it or not, it gets better before it gets worse. Looking back at Andrew Dobson's old artwork is a total treat. He was far better way back in the day, and his animations were also nothing to wave a stick at. So what happened? I mean, that right there was fucking nuts, and then there's this that's just okay. Well, one can come with many assumptions, but what seems to be the internet's favorite is that he simply got lazy. And at first I must admit I was disagreeing. After all, making a webcomic on a steady schedule is not an easy thing to do, especially if you have to produce several of them every week. But then errors such as poor inking, lazy coloring and repetitive formula start shining through. And it gets even worse. And then you start noticing his designs and to be honest, the creativity is lacking to say the least. He's taking a fuck ton of inspiration from anime and manga, yet he hates anime and manga and everything they stand for. And I fear that the reason for him not changing this is because Andrew Dobson isn't particularly good at taking any criticism. In fact, Andrew Dobson is notoriously known for flying off the handle at anyone who offers any criticism, constantly thinking that we don't know any better, or we're haters, or we're trolls, or we got it in for him. Dude. Dobson, remember the teachers you had back in school? Sometimes you need someone to sit down and tell you that what you did wasn't good enough and help that improve yourself. You didn't graduate without changing your style or listening to advice, now did you? I'm starting to sense a pattern here. Are you? Now, art stealing is a term that has been thrown around a lot in this season of the webcam relief, and the biggest culprit of this is without a doubt incarnate. That however doesn't mean that Andrew Dobson isn't also guilty, and in fact more shamefully so than Jackie Diaz. I'm just gonna let that hang in the air for a minute. But yeah, now you're obviously going, dude, the guy has graduated from super advanced art schools, why the fuck would he trace? And I didn't say trace. Andrew Dobson is on DeviantArt, where he makes fan drawings of stuff that he likes, such as Adventure Time. And he sells them. For money. As opposed to selling them for honey loops. Now, I myself have been on DeviantArt and I wanted to sell some prints of my stuff and I read the terms and licensing through for once. I know. In the terms and license formula, you will find that you are not allowed to sell anything that contains characters or designs from other franchises. Now, drawing it is fine, selling it, not so much. And while some can discuss whether or not it's fine for people who draw franchises in their own style, Andrew Dobson copies the original art so much that you can hardly tell the difference. And sells it! This is 
illegal. Fuck. But to be fair and honest, I don't see as much wrong with Andrew Zard as most people do. And trust me, there's a lot of people who got beef with his art. It's far from the worst art I've ever seen, and it shows a cute and minimalistic cartoony style that is nice on the eyes and recognizable. You would, however, expect a guy with this sort of education to produce something far better than this. I'm just saying! Just one more step at Andrew Zard and we'll be on our way. When drawing, especially when drawing real people or real events, you have a certain power. You can make yourself as well as everyone else exactly how you want to. So every villain in this comic who didn't agree with Andrew's views are usually depicted as ugly unattractive people. It isn't an uncommon thing, but it's still a low blow seeing the people you're drawing has no way of defending themselves. Who? Andrew Dobson? No, seriously, who else is there to talk about? His wife? She seems cute. Damn, done! This is a comic about Andrew Dobson by Andrew Dobson. So if we rewind a little, remember that thing I said about returning to the whole catty end thing? Well, might as well do this now, cause fuck me if there's actually anything to talk about. After the whole catty end thing, Andrew Dobson's popularity just gradually started taking a nosedive. There's two things you can do with criticism when offered to you. You can take it into consideration, or you can ignore it. Now, the first one is the best one in the long run. Success is not a fork in the road where one option goes to success and the other one leads you to failure. You have to pass by various types of failures to get to your success. That's just how it is. And you won't know you're in a failure place if no one tells you, or you don't listen to anyone telling you. Andrew Dobson doesn't take any criticism. If you try to provide any, he'll A block you, B remove the option to post comments or criticism completely, or C reply in a way that makes him seem holier than thou. And the whole thing seems to originate from Caddy N. Ever since Andrew graduated from his super art school, he seems to have felt untouchable. He started acting like he is the only one who has ever graduated from a prestigious drawing school. Here, look at this. One of my friends made this. The guy fucking made this from scratch and despite that, he still compliments my work and gives me feedback and takes criticism like it was what kept him alive. Andrew Dobson on the other hand, doesn't. Fine, 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 there is one character we can talk about in this pile of shit. Andrew Dobson! Oh, well, actually, it's a dude called Tenko. Oh, well, actually, it's a dude called Jon Snow. But it's obviously Andrew Dobson. Tenko is a character who Andrew Dobson likes to project his previous mistakes onto without it seeming like it was him who made those mistakes. And like previously stated, this kid is pictured as being super talented, but then grows to become even more talented. We're going to talk about Mary Sue's more in a different episode, but trust me when I say there's some Mary Sue vibes coming from this. I mean, even Tenko's teacher, who is a real hard ass, is quoted saying how the kid is talented and can go find shit, when he was the only one in his class to fail miserably. Any real teacher would be like, Stop being such a little bitch. Slapped him, given him an F, sent him home, jerked off, gone home, beaten his wife, and gone to bed. Oh, oh sorry. sorry, just just had middle school flashbacks there for a moment. <laughs> The premise is a free. Once more, we're seeing something that on paper seems like a really great idea. 
I'd like nothing more than to see what it's like in the daily life of a professional in the field of comics and animation, but that's not what we're given here. Instead what we're given is a self-proclaimed expert talking shit to people who doesn't do things like he does. A wasted opportunity with no redeeming qualities. At least it's not directly offensive to read. The art is a 6. The dude can draw, what can I say? I don't hate it as much as other people. It has its own charm and some sprinkles of genius here and there. His hands and eyebrows could use a little tweaking though and his designs are out of time. Also, Andrew, just just stop shit talking anime so much, especially when you show so many traits and inspiration from it. Characters is a one. Here's a thought. When the character that you base on yourself in a comic where you're free to make him so much cooler and better just because you have that power, is a shitty unlikable character and he's the only reoccurring character in your comic besides a grumpy teacher, what does that say about you? This character is just a shit, plain and simple. He shows nothing that'll make you like him and it's just an all around prick. All in all, the comic is a free. It can be an interesting read, but just as you start getting into it, you slowly start realizing that it's all just Andrew bitching and moaning about everything and nothing, giving no reason for it, depicting himself as a second coming of Christ when it comes to art, and done with art that really isn't on par with what you'd expect from a guy with his education. I think if there's one thing you should take away from this, is that you should never let pride take over your project. You will get better, that's just how it is. But don't think that you can never improve any further. Because that's what Andrew Dobson did. He believed that he had reached the pinnacle and couldn't progress from there. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next way I can relief. Take care. Now drop that bass! The Christmas music is playing outside from a live band. Um, while we wait for them to finish, uh, happy holidays, people! Uh, sorry about all, uh, sorry about the long waits uh, for this episode. I probably won't make a Christmas special or anything this year, uh, nor will I make a New Year's thing or anything. I simply don't have the time. But uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, uh, Happy Hanukkah, or whatever you celebrate, and. Uh, be good to each other and give each other lots of awesome presents. And I'll see you in 2014. So, happy holidays! Happy holidays! <laughs>